Hello, everybody. I'm getting good at this late stuff. What is it, about two, three minutes late? I'm getting good at it. I'm perfecting the lateness. <laughs> yeah. Keeping everybody in suspense. Is he coming? Is he not coming? I'm coming. I'm here. What's up? Welcome to another Wired Live. I appreciate all you guys for joining. If you don't mind, please, please, please shoot me a hello uh, when you come on. Write me a comment. Let me know you're here. Tell me hello. Let me know where you're from. I always like to know how far we're reaching. I'm sure by now everybody saw the um, the thumbnail for tonight. We're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, hooks. I love hooks. That's the business end of what we do. Let me tell you. Um you know, I absolutely love hooks. I have a passion for hooks. Uh, me and Curtis Hobbs, Mr. Lightwire Hooks, can talk all stinking day long about hooks. It's pretty crazy, actually, when you think about it. It's just a hook, right? No, it's not. There's a lot of variations in hooks, a lot of difference in hooks, and different hooks for different applications. So we're going to talk about all kinds of good stuff when it comes to hooks, all right? Um, I'm really, really excited about it. I'm going to enjoy it talking through everything. Hopefully you guys brought some questions. Listen, if this is your first time on the live, first of all, welcome. Welcome to the Wired Fam. Um, I do this for you guys, okay? I do this so that you have the opportunity to get on YouTube, not just watch a video and say, okay, that guy caught a lot of fish, but to get on here with me and pick my brain a little bit and just say, Hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Oh, I saw this on the lake the other day. Hey, when you're talking about hooks, what do you think about, you know, this? What do you think about that? What do you think about color, size, shape, all that good stuff? So this is a time for you guys to use that comment bar, use that comment section and write me something. Say, what's up? What do you think about this? Hey, I saw that. Well, you know, like I said, whatever. So please, please, please. There is no dumb questions. Uh, no dumb comments. Everybody's at a different point in their walk in crappie fishing, right? So I'm not a genius. I mean, I'm not the end all be all for crappie fishing and I'm sure nobody else on here is either. We can all learn something every day. So don't be afraid to post that comment. I would love to, uh, to answer some, some questions tonight. And that's what I'm here for. Like I said, I'm here for you guys something different than just watching a video and somebody catching fish and telling you something. You actually get an opportunity to come back at me with a question. So take advantage of that. Okay. Let's see who all do we have on tonight? Josh Sanders. What's up? Heidi Clark from Idaho. What's going on? Heidi, Jimmy Pratt. What's up, Jimmy? All right, let me just go ahead and get this out of the way real quick. Like, we, East Tennessee Crappie Club, has a tournament this weekend on Fort Loudon. I've already seen two guys that are going to fish that tournament this weekend. Those guys are not allowed to ask me questions about where to catch fish. I ain't answering them. So, <laughs> right now, I'm sitting on top for Lee, or for uh, knock on wood. I won't jinx myself, but right now, I'm sitting on top for Angler of the Year. So, I just want to kind of. Uh, you know, maybe retain a little bit of that if I can. So I'm going to stay easy on the questions for Fort Loud tonight, boys. All right. Uh, I'll answer those next week. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Let's keep going. Harold Stamey from Rockwood. What's up? David Wall for Amarillo. What's going on, David? Daryl Quarles from Birchwood. Hello, Daryl. Um, hope you had a good time at your tournament last weekend. I think they had a tournament on the 5th. Daryl did. I don't know how you finished, Daryl, but I hope you did well. Uh, Jamie Nelson from Kentucky Lake. What's going on, Jamie? Larry Merrick, what's up? Major Brown, hello. Larry McBride, Chad Hillard, hello. Dan, I'm going to make an attempt at this. Haverstro, is that right? I think I got that right. Got it close, maybe? Uh, Slab Buster, what's up? Lamar Ingram, hello. Mike S. Paul, hello from Dayton. Ron Hall from Mississippi. Ron, we're going to talk about a hook that you guys probably use a little bit down there in old Mississippi. We don't use it a whole lot up here, but I'd say the Mississippi guys, the Texas guys, I'd say y'all probably use it a little bit. So anyway, I've got some. Don't use them a whole lot, but I've got them in case, you know, if the if the times call for it, I'm going to use them. So anyway, we're going to get into that here in a little bit. 
Josh Hurst from Harrogate, Tennessee. What's up, Josh? Trandy Carpenter, hello, from Louisiana. Um, Joseph Thaxton from Macon. Guys, I got the hiccups now. Jeez, do <clears throat> All right, Heath McDaniel, Jody Gosway, hello, Charlie Neal, O'Neal, I'm sorry, Charlie O'Neal, uh, Trandy Carpenter, Ashley Coffee, what's going on, buddy? It is going well, Ashley, going well. I tell you what, um, there's some nights I'm energized, and there's some nights I'm not. Tonight I'm energized. I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm looking forward to this weekend. Loudon, ah, get back in on some, getting back on some home waters. Not necessarily home. I've always kind of been a leery of Loudon. Kind of stayed off Loudon. Reason being is Loudon's dirty, and I never really want to put my boat in a nasty lake. So I, I do consider my home home lake Teleco. But yeah, let's be real. They're can they're um, joined by a canal so they're kind of the same lake really to be honest with you but Loudon does stay muddier because it's a different river that feeds it whatever um but yeah kind of home water's back in there so you know looking forward to this weekend it's going to be fun i'm uh i'm excited i'm amped up about it and uh it's gonna be fun let's just say that it's gonna be a good time all right so ronnie harris from Carrollton, georgia what's going on ronnie Josh Sanders, uh, Josh, I'll come back to your comment in a minute, okay? We'll come back to Josh's comment. Josh, don't let me forget. As a matter of fact, you might want to copy that and bring it on down a little bit with you, okay? Uh, Todd Pell, what's up? Heath McDaniel. Uh, Charlie O'Neill, Dan Haberstroh said it right. Uh, good deal. Good deal. Glad I said it right. I get one a night. That's my one. I won't say anything else right all night, but that's my one right there. Okay. Uh, Tim Payne, what's up? Slab Busters is fish with live scope Sunday. Uh, <laughs> it sucks. You can see them not bite. Well, yeah, it's true. Um, Marshall Barton from upstate South Carolina in that uh, Marshall, you in that uh, Hartwell area? Cause I've been putting some videos out on Hartwell. Um, been catching, man. I caught so many fish on Hartwell. It was ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And I ain't got to the big ones yet. You guys are going to see some bigger fish come from Hartwell. So be looking for that in the videos coming up next week and this week. Got one this week, one next week. Going to be good. Going to be fun to watch. You guys check those out. Don't forget to watch the videos, okay, guys? Let's see. BK, hi, Matt. Got my shirts and beanie. Love them. Yeah, guys. Glad, BK. Glad you like them. I love them myself. I got on the hoodie tonight. Where's the logo? There it is over there. Wired for Crappie. Got the hat on tonight, okay? Wired for Crappie merch, guys. If you guys are interested in that, thanks, BK, for bringing it up. But if you are interested in Wired for Crappie merchandise, if you're Wired for Crappie like I am, if that brain ticks for Crappie Vision, www.wiredforcrappie.com. Basically, the name.com. You can pick up some Wired for Crappie merchandise. We got shirts, hats, hoodies, cups, Here's, my, here's the cups right here. You got the mugs, right? So um, all that's on the website. Check it out. Thank you, BK. I'm glad you got your stuff. I'm glad you like it, buddy. Michael from Orlando, Florida. What's going on, Michael? Daryl Kreider. Is that is that right? Critter? Kreider? See, I only get one a night. Whitwell, Tennessee. What's going on, Daryl? Daryl's from Whitwell. Matthew Kofelt, what's up? 285 from Greenville, Tennessee. What's going on, man? Let's see. Slabbuster said, Hartwell, Great Lake, huh, Matt? You put the boat in, caught fish 100 feet from the ramp. <laughs> I did. I caught them all over that lake. Now, I ran around a lot that day, too. I, I, I love to venture out. I don't stick close. That's not me. I, it's not in my blood. It ain't in my blood to stick close. But if I find fish close, I'm fishing close. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, anyway, yeah, it was a great lake. It really is. Heart was full of fish. And it was just a, it's, it's a great experience to go down there and fish those waters. 
So it was really, really fun. All right. I'm going to answer. I got a couple questions up here, guys. Trandy Carpenter, I've seen your comment. We're going to get to you in just a second. Uh, I'm going to answer Josh's first. Uh, so Josh asks, when do you decide to use bigger baits such as three-inch slim stick like uh, the picture you posted? <laughs> Josh is watching me, boy. Uh, how do you know what size profile bait to try? Well, actually, Josh, that slim stick that I posted was not a three-inch bait. Um, it was the two and three-eighths uh, slim stick. I do not use a three-inch slim stick. I do not use that large of a bait. Uh, never have, probably never will. Now, I say that, I should take that back. If I get to some of these other lakes that have those three-pound fish in them, then maybe. But um, I prefer a two, well, actually a, a one and three-quarter to a two-and-a-half-inch bait. I do not prefer anything larger than that. Um, small fish catch, or small baits catch big fish, okay? Um, you don't have to have now big baits may not catch smaller fish, but there again, I'm out there to catch fish and have fun. So I generally fish with a one and three quarter inch bait to two and a half inch bait. That's just my preference. Is the three inch slim stick a good bait? Absolutely. It is. But for me, it's a little bulky. Okay. Um, for my likings and that's just my personal preference. But if I were going to use a three inch bait, Josh, I would use that in a situation where I know there's larger fish and that's all I'm trying to target. If I do not want to catch those 10 to 11 inch fish, man, they will hit a three inch bait, but generally you'll catch larger fish on a larger bait. So I would use it in a situation where I wasn't trying to catch any of those smaller fish. Okay. Um, I just prefer the one and three quarter to two and a half. That's me. So, all right, let's go down here and Trandy has a question. Okay. When do you use plastic versus hair jigs? Uh, that is a very good question. Okay. Uh, I generally use a hair jig when I'm looking to downsize my profile. I believe, Trandy, I'm a big believer in profile. I'm a big believer in contrast, not so much color, definitely not a believer in scent. If you guys didn't watch that video with Copper Tone Sport and Mountain Dew, please go back and watch that. Um, asking, I think the title was, uh, do these really work? And it was, the, I had a picture of Nibbles and I had a picture of Mountain Dew and Copper Tone. Anyway, I'm not a big believer in scent. You can't, you can't force me or you can't convince me that scent works or doesn't um what i am a believer in is profile and contrast okay contrasting colors for the water clarities profile for matching the hatch or you know matching the the forage the natural forage that the fish are feeding on at the time so if I'm trying to downsize, if there's if the fry have just hatched, if there's smaller fry in the lake, if I'm not seeing any larger fry anywhere, any larger minnows, and I want to downsize, I'll go to a hair jig, okay? Because you can get some hair jigs. I don't have any with me to diet, uh, I don't think. No, I don't have any hair jigs with me. But a lot of times you can take the hair off the back of that hair jig and you can cut it down with a pair of scissors and you can make it even smaller. Now, if the fish are very lethargic and they're not wanting to chase a bait, I'll also go to a hair jig because you can hold a hair jig still in front of their face and that hair will breathe in the water and it gives action to a still bait. Does that make sense? So if you're holding that bait still, you're still getting action with that hair on that jig so you can keep that bait in front of those fish and they'll look up there and see that hair fluctuating and they'll strike. Um, that's another time that I'll use hair. But for the most part, I'd say it's 80, well, probably 90, 10 for me, plastics or hair. I use hair about 10% of my fishing.
All right, so let's talk about what we came here for. Let's talk about hooks, okay? If you guys are okay with jumping right into it. You guys okay jumping right into it? Right, let me look and see if there's any more questions first. Let's see. Marshall said Hartwell's his home lake. Went long line and caught some stripers over 10 pounds. Good fight on six pounds. I bet. I bet it was, buddy. Richard says, what's up, Matt, from Southern Illinois? What's up? We have a bunch of really deep strip mine lakes. Uh, any tips for finding them in the winter? Uh, yeah, strip mine lakes are generally very, very clear. Generally, they have bluff walls, correct? So strip mines, they're probably not laid back. They're probably straight up and down. If 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 the strip mines in Illinois are, are similar to Tennessee, they're bluff walls straight up and down. So um, natural color baits in clear water. And try to find the irregularities in wall, okay? And what I mean by that is a rock that juds out or um, a tree that's falling off the top that's laying down uh, in, in, the, in the water. Try to find some type of irregularity on those bluff walls and you should find fish, okay? Brad Nelson, hello. Robert Johnson, Southeast Arkansas, what's going on? Bo Myers asks, will split shot weights help you see your bait on live scope? If so, what size? Anything on your line, Bo, will help you see it. Um, braided line shows up on your live scope. Braided line, you can actually see your line going down through the water on live scope. So, um, to answer your question, yes. And as far as what size, any size, any size split shot you put on there is going to give you a return. The larger the split shot, the bigger return you're going to get. But the larger the split shot, the faster your bait's going to sink too. So, you know, I don't know if you're dead sticking fish or if you're pitching fish, casting the fish. But if you are, you don't want to go too big of a split shot because your bait's going to sink too fast. So. Trandy says, good explanation. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Ronnie Harris got my back, Ronnie. Thank you very much. Guys, yes, please, please, if y'all do not mind, smash that thumbs up button for me, please, if you like the information that you're getting here. Uh, listen, YouTube has an algorithm. It's just like anything else. Uh, the more likes you give somebody on their video, the more they're likely to recommend it to other people. We're trying to grow the Wired fam, right? That's the whole goal of this. The whole goal of this is to help people and to reach more people. And you smashing that thumbs up, sharing my videos, sharing the lives. Everybody has social media today. All you have to do is hit that share, share it to your social media. That helps the Wired fam out, helps me out, helps you out, helps everybody out, okay? Helps more people learn what we're teaching, what we're going through, and everybody can benefit from it, right? So, and eventually there's going to be people on here that are going to help me too. You guys, I've learned a ton from you guys over the year. Well, what, year and a half we've been doing this now? something like that. I get messages and emails all the time from you guys. And you're like, Hey, I saw this. Hey, I saw that. And I get to thinking about it. And I was like, you know, I'm like, yeah, I didn't think about it that way. That's right. Hmm. I'm going to try that. And I've went and tried stuff that was just off the wall stuff from you guys. And it's like, Whoa, that worked. Okay, cool. Hmm. I'm constantly learning just like you guys are. You guys teach me too. So hit that thumbs up, share, share the videos. I appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ronnie. Blake Hawk, what's up? What's going on, Blake? Hope you're doing well. Let's see. 
All right. So let's talk about hooks. All right. I think I got most of my questions. If I missed a question, please don't shoot me. Just uh, copy it and ask me again, okay? If I missed somebody. I hope I didn't. But if I did, I'm sorry. You can ask me again, okay? So, hooks. Why Why does it matter what hook you use, right? I mean, what, what's re really, what's the difference in a hook? It's just a hook. Well, a hook makes a huge difference when it comes to crappie fishing, okay? That is the business end of what we do. Uh, making waves. Hello, Laneville, Texas. What's going on, man? So, if you don't think a hook's important, I challenge you to go out there, tie a jig on the end of your line, and go fish with a jig without a hook on it and see how productive you are. You ain't going to be very productive. You might get some bites, but you ain't going to catch no fish unless they're really dumb fish and they just hold on to it until they get in the boat. <laughs> you ain't going to catch no fish. The hook is probably the most important part of what we do, okay? Uh, that's really what puts fish in the boat is the hook. So there are a lot of different types of hooks. There's round bends, there's sickle bends, there's uh, Aberdeen's, there's light wires, there's gold, red, bronze. Uh, uh, what other colors? Um, there's one more color I'm forgetting. Gold, red, bronze, there's green. Um, there's black and there's black oxide. So there's all these different hooks, right? All these different types of hooks. Curtis Hobbs, if you're on here, he's probably going to call me later and smack me down. He's going to be like, don't talk about my hooks. <laughs> anyway, um, there's just so many different types of hooks. What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? Okay. Um, I'm going to share a little bit of my information or how, well, I, let's see, how do I say this? I'm going to share a little bit of my feelings towards these different hooks. What I feel, okay, is going on with these different hooks. And do I have science behind it? Mm, no. But do I have experience behind it? Mm, yeah. So, you know, I'm going to go through everything I feel about hooks. I want you guys to join in, okay? I want you all to come back, comment, say some different things to me. I'm probably going to say some things. You're probably going to tell me I'm stupid. That's okay. I don't mind. I want you guys commenting back, all right? So, um, let's talk first about the different styles of hook, okay? Now, I'm going to show you jig heads with hooks on them. I'm not talking about jig heads tonight. We will talk about jig heads another night, all right? Right now, <laughs> Heidi said, talk slow. I'm taking notes. Right now, we're just going to talk about the business end of the hook, okay? Um, the hook itself, all right? So we will talk about jig heads, just not tonight. We're not talking about lead. We're talking about hooks. All right, so let's talk about the different styles of hook first. So for crappie fishing, there are several different styles of hook. You have, let me grab some out here. Bear with me. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 All right. So, one that everybody has seen, everybody knows about, is your standard, just eagle claw, bronze, round bend. Okay? That's your standard eagle claw dropped on my computer. Hang on. <laughs> Standard eagle claw. I'm trying to get it focused here. Round bend. All right. Can you guys, is that focusing? All right. There we go. Standard eagle claw round bend. That's hook number one. All right. We'll call it number one. We've also got your sickle hooks. Who likes these right here? Who's going to, who's going to comment and say only hook to have in your boat. Best hook in the world. Come on now. Where are my sickle hookers? Come on, sickle hookers. Where are you guys at? Oh, boy, Slab Buster's done. Wore it out right here. Look right there. Sickle hook for everything. I told you, I, we got sickle hookers. 
They're just, they're just, they get into a sickle hook and they're done. That's the only thing, right? Here we go, making waves. I like sickle hook for majority of the time, but when I use larger three eighths ounce and above, I use a round bend. All right, my sickle hookers, y'all stay tuned. If you're a sickle hooker, please do not leave right now. Stick around. Let's talk. Let's chat for a little bit, okay? All right. All right. And then we also have, I'm going to have to hold two hooks up beside one another right here. All right, so this is I'm going back now. This is your round bend, all right? I want you to look at the diameter of that hook, the shank of this hook, how wide it is. You've got your light wire, okay? See how much skinnier that hook is? Still a round bend, but if I put these over top of one another, okay, can you see how much thicker the one on the bottom is? The, the Just the regular eagle claw, it's on top now, okay? So that is your light wire hook. All right, let me put them together so they're the same. All right, so you've got light wire hooks. All right, and of course, you've got your heavy gauge. That is a heavy gauge. That is a black oxide round bend in a heavy gauge. So it's thicker than your standard Eagle Claw round bend. It is a lot thicker. Okay. So that's basically, oh, Aberdeen. Let me not forget about the Aberdeen. This is a staple in the crappie community, really. You got your gold Aberdeen hook. Now, they do have different styles of Aberdeen. They have a bronze. They have a gold, a red, a blah, 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 blah. But an Aberdeen hook, okay, that is your Aberdeen crappie hook. It is a round bend. It does have a long shank. You can see the shank. It is a long shanked Aberdeen hook. Okay, there's one more. Let's not leave out the true turn. What is a true turn? That's a lot like a gold Aberdeen. Okay, kind of looks, when you turn it this way, it looks like an Aberdeen, right? Au contraire, mon frère. Anybody seen one of those before? That is your true turn Aberdeen. Okay. It is in the Aberdeen family. Obviously, it's got the long shank. Okay. But it's got that funky little bend in it. We're going to go over what that bend does for you or supposedly does for you here in just a little bit. Okay. So that's pretty much your different styles of hook. Now, somebody probably is going to say, well, what about the circle hook? Yeah, well, you know, you got circle hooks too. I get it. You know, yeah, I got you. I understand. Crappie fishing, I don't feel personally, this is personal opinion again, guys, that I don't feel like a circle hook has that much, carries that much weight in the crappie world. I just don't feel it does. Okay. Somebody might tell me I'm wrong. That's okay. But... I'd say it's probably not one of the most used hooks in the crappie world. Let's say that. All right. So that's your pretty much your basic hooks for crappie fishing. Let's go through them one more time real quick. You got just your regular standard round. Okay. You've got the sickle. Everybody loves the sickle. Sickle hook. Got it. You got the light wire. Okay. It's like a needle really. You've got the heavy, the heavy gauge. Okay. You got the Aberdeen. And you got the true turn. Okay. Now, somebody's going to say, okay, we well, got all those. What do they do? What are they for? What's the, the positives, the negatives, to this, to that? This is where it's going to get technical. Okay, guys. It's going to get technical on you real quick. All right. Everybody knows I'm a very technical guy. I like tech tech stuff. I'm tech savvy. I like it. I like that put a lot of thought into everything and I try to, you know, it's the next edge, right? What's the, it's the next edge? So um, before we get technical on what each one does, let's talk about sizes. OK, so before we get going there, 
there's pretty much two sizes that most everybody in the crappie world uses mostly now you're gonna have some of those guys uh, that's that step out of that box and they're gonna be like well i use a number three or i use a number one or i use you know but for the most part there's going to be two sizes that most anglers use a number four and a number two all right um The number four, now not a four-aught, okay, not a four-aught, just a number four. A four-aught is a, a bass hook, and it's a big old joker. So it's not a four-aught, it's just a number four. So that is your number four, okay? Number four sickle. Um, the number two sickle, let's find us a number two. Come here, number two, number two. Hey, we go. So there's a number two sickle. All right, that's a number two. That's a number four. See how much shorter the shank is? I'll flip them around so you can see. See if I can hold that up where you can see it. Number four is red. Number two is bronze. So you can see how much long longer the shank is on the number two. Now. There's also number two and number four round bends. Okay. Here's a number four in a round bend. Here's a number two in a round bend. Much longer. Now one has a longer collar, so you kind of got to get the collar in there. But this one's a number two. This one's a number four. All right. So you can kind of compare. Number four and a number two is what most all crappie fishermen use. Now you're gonna you're gonna ask me why a four and a two. Well, that's typically um, what most jig companies, first of all, put in their jigs in their jig heads is a number four or a number two. That's typically what you can get from most most crappie jig companies. Okay. Uh, what do I like better, a four or a two? Well, I go back and forth a little bit, okay? So, uh, let me see. Let me get a bait. Why do I like a number two? Well, I'll show you why. I prefer a number two. I do use a four some. My shad style baits, like the Slim Stick, I'll go with a four uh, my stump bugs, I prefer a two. Okay, let me show you why. Here is a two. All right. When I run a number two down through this jig, the hook is going to come out. You can see that body is nice and straight. Okay. A number two puts that hook right out the end of that body. You see that? Just perfect, right out. That's an inch and three quarter bait. It puts that, that number two comes right out the end of it, perfect. Now, why do I like that? Because if that fish is short strike, if the fish is short striking, I'm gonna get a lot more hookups right there than I will with a number four. Let me show you where a number four comes out. So again, I'm matching my bait with my hook so it's not just throw a hook on there okay baits nice and straight look at where that number four comes out which one would you rather would you rather it come out the end and be sitting right at the back end of that bait where those fish can grab it a little bit easier just a little easier or would you rather it come out there something else to think about is that bait's more prone to tear with that hook coming out mid body as it would be coming out the back. I've got more mass of that jig that is on the hook. Okay. In a number two than a number four. So that's something to think about. All right. Where am I at? So number four, number two. All right. Now, like I said earlier, there's diff there's light wires, there's heavies, okay? 
Um, let's talk about one more size that I don't use much, but the gentleman from Mississippi earlier, I told him we had one of his hooks here. I got him. Let me show you guys. This is a number one heavy. All right. You can see how thick that shank is. Okay. That is a number one heavy on an eighth ounce. Okay. Now, when do I use these? When do I suggest using something like this? Those guys that are down there in Mississippi, Texas, um, fishing for two and a half plus pound fish on the regular need a heavy hook. All right. They're not fishing thick cover. They're fishing cover, but it ain't thick. It ain't like we're fishing up here most of the time. It's not thick cover. It's trees. It's bridges. It's stuff. It's, it's cover, but it's not necessarily thick, right? So you can get away with a very stiff, very large hook. All right. That is the exception to my rule. If I go to Texas or I go to uh, Mississippi or I go somewhere where there's large fish on the regular, they're tying up braid. They're tying up 15 to 20 pound braid. They're rocking these jigs and they are, they're dropping. They're fishing straight down in these muddy water lakes. OK, you can get away with a very large hook. Now, let me show you what this stump bug looks like on this jig head. It 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 looks kind of funny, but let me show it to you. Okay, that joker means business. All right, <laughs> so you're 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 again right out the back of the jig. You kind of have to be, but you're actually past the jig with that hook. So um, still a good presentation, still a good setup, but you can see how much bend, how much gap you have here. I mean, some of your smaller fish, you're gonna have a hard time getting a good set with with that jig head. OK, so if I know I'm fishing for those larger fish, I'm going with that number one. I'm going with that heavy hook, that extra heavy. OK, and I'm going after those big fish because I want to be able to swing those fish in the boat without that hook bending. Right. So that's the extra heavy side of it. Um, let's talk about the flip side to that. Let's talk about the light wire. So we talked about the extra heavy. Now let's talk about this little white light, light wire. Look at these two compared to one another, right? So if I was to hook this up right here, look how look how much that hook bends. Look at that. And that's just that's I'm not putting a lot on that. Okay. Oop, wrong one. That hook bends very very easy. Now, what situation am I going to use this light wire? Okay. If I'm fishing very thick cover and I know I'm going to get hung and I don't want to break off a whole lot, I'm going with a light wire hook because I can tie an eight or 10 pound, even a mono to that hook. And I can straighten that hook out of wood, brush, um, anything I need to straighten that hook out of. And I can bend it back and I can go back to fishing. I don't have to retie all the time. OK, now downfall to that light wire hook. A two and a half pound fish horse will, there I go dropping it on my computer again. You horse a two and a half pound fish with that light wire hook and guess what? It's coming unbuttoned because I'm telling you it does not take much to bend that hook out. All right, you can take your finger and you can bend that hook out just that simple. Now, a plus another plus side to a light wire hook is they are needle thin. You set that hook and it goes through that crappie's membrane very, very easy because it's so thin. It's needle thin. It goes right through the mouth pretty quick. That would have been funny if I would have hooked myself, wouldn't it have been? All right. So light wire hook. That's my go to hook if I'm fishing. If I if the fish, if I'm fishing a tournament. And the fish will not come out of cover. They're deep in cover and they will not come out. I'm using a light wire hook to go down there and get them. Okay. Now I'm not horsing them out. I'm going to be easy, but I'm putting this in cover because I can pull it, straighten it, bend it back, go right back down in cover. All right. 
That is, and notice most of my go-tos, guys, are round bend hooks, okay? So let me tell you guys why. Everybody's going to, all my sickle hook guys, I have fished with a sickle long enough to tell you this. All right. When you have a round bend, there is no part of this bend from the point of that hook all the way through the bend up the shank. There is no part of that that is bent past 90. There's no part of that, I'm saying it again, no part of that hook right there that is bent past 90 degrees. That makes sense? Now, this sickle hook, there is a part of this sickle hook that is bent past 90 degrees. Where is that at? I'll show you right here. That sickle hook is bent past 90. Why does that make a difference, Matt? Well, trust me, you catch enough fish on a sickle hook or you get that sickle hook hung enough, it will break and it will break in the exact same spot every single time it breaks. I've broke these off in fish multiple times. Where is that hook going to break? I'll tell you. That hook is going to break right there. Every single time. You get this hung, break it loose, bend it back, get it hung, break it loose, pull it loose, bend it back, get it hung. Three or four times, you're going to lose a fish. Now, let me show you. Let's see. So here's a sickle. All right. I'm telling you that sickle hook will break right here every time. Now, I'm going to try to do this with y'all watching. So you bend it. Okay. You can bend it back. All right. You get it hung. You bend it. You bend it back. Okay. And now I'm bending it from the end. Bend it. Bend it back. You do this a couple times. It's going to break. And it's going to break at some break at different points than others. But I'm telling you, when it goes, it's going to go in the same spot. Every single time. Okay. Now, where did it break? Let me get another sickle here. Every single time, it's going to break at that point. Let's see if I can hold this up beside one another. It's going to break at the point where it bends past 90. Can you guys see that? I'm trying to hold them up as close as I can to one another. Right there, where I told you it will break. Okay. I can take this round bend and I can bend it out and bend it back 100 times before it breaks. I'm telling you, a just a standard round bend is my go to crappie jig head. Okay, or hook for that simple purpose. I have lost fish. I have hooked fish and pulled back that multiple times. Okay. So my sickle hookers, where y'all at? Slap Buster says, I can straighten my hook out three or four times before they break. After the third time, I tie a new hook on every time. Slap Buster, um, you know, a round bend hook, you won't have that problem. You can get more than three or four out of a round bend. I'm just saying. Um, is a sickle hook a good hook? Yes. Let, let me go back. <laughs> let me go back. 
A sickle hook is a good hook. Hey, there's Curtis. I told y'all I was going to get a phone call from Curtis. Curtis is kind of like light wire hooks myself. Hey, Curtis, I just got done talking about light wires. I hope you didn't miss it. I was talking about the light wires. There's Curtis. This is actually one of Curtis's hooks, guys. This is a this is an eighth ounce light wire um, from Mr. Curtis Hobbs, and I love them. And I told everybody when I use them, Curtis, I use them when I'm fishing in brush. I use them when I'm fishing deep in brush. That way I can straighten that hook out and I can get those fish out of that brush pile. So anyway. What's up, Curtis? Um, so, yeah, that's why I do not prefer, Blake, good night, we'll see you later. That's why I do not prefer a sickle hook. Now, as I was saying, they are good hooks. I do like the hooks. I do not have anything against the hook. One thing I do like about sickle hooks is it does open up your gap. So there's a gap. This is a number two, okay? This is a number two round bend, all right? The gap is point A to point B inside here to here, okay? That is your gap of your hook. So if you look at a number two gap and you look at a number four sickle gap okay the number two round point I'm trying to show you guys this the number two round point is almost the same gap as a number four sickle right at it i mean dadgum very close to it okay so that's a number two round and that's a number four sickle. And they're very, very similar. So why do I like a sickle? Because the gap is a little larger on a sickle. Okay. A sickle hook does have a little larger throat gap from here to here. Which gives you a little bit more clearance when you stick a jig on that. Okay. When you stick a jig on that hook, you're you're eating up some of your clearance in between the business end and the shank. The number the sickles do give you a little more clearance. Now, does that result in better hook sets? I'll let you guys be the deciding factor in that one. I'm not gonna go into that, but um I do know I fish with a number six some too, and I don't necessarily have uh, on the days when they're really finicky and they're not they're not biting very well. Yes, it probably does having a little bit larger throat or a little larger gap. It probably helps. Um, but when they're being real real finicky, sometimes a too large of a gap could. Uh, uh, Sorry, I was reading a comment. I forgot what I was saying. We're going to go on. Sometimes that happens, reading comments in the middle of my conversations. My thought processes. Um, but yeah, so, you know, does it help with hook set? I, I don't know. Sometimes I think those smaller hooks on days when they're finicky are better because um, it allows them to get up there on the bait a little bit more too. So anyway, um, so there you go. There you have it with sickle hook, round hook. I prefer a round for those reasons. I feel like it's it's just a more versatile hook. It's just going to last me a little bit longer. Uh, a lot of days, if you're shooting docks, for instance, if I'm shooting docks, I don't care what I have tied on. You know why? Because I'm going to lose that jig head. I ain't going to have to bend it out, you know, bend it back more than once because <laughs> after once I'm losing that jig head. I, I shoot docks with four pound tests and high vis four pound tests mono and i'm underneath docks i'm gonna lose that jig head before i break it that's just how it is but if i'm if i've got braid tied on and i'm out there fishing brush piles um i'm gonna bend that hook out a lot and for that simple purpose i do not prefer the sickle all right because it's gonna break and i do not want to break off a two or three pound fish well you know two plus pound fish because my hook fails don't want to do it so that's my opinion that's how i fish that's what i see and how i like to use those hooks so 
Again, all opinion, guys. Don't shoot the messenger. Just my opinion. But now let's talk about the Aberdeen and the true turn for just a minute, okay? Um, and then we're going to talk color. We're going to talk hook color, okay? So Aberdeen, straight shank. This is a number two Aberdeen. I'm dropping hooks in the floor. I'll step on that in a minute. So this is a number two gold Aberdeen hook. This is my minna hook all day long, twice on Sunday. This is my go to minna hook. All right. When I'm fishing a floating a minna, I'm fishing a number two gold Aberdeen. Now, my fishing partner, every time I swing and miss on one, tells me, your hook's too big, your hook's too big. I've heard that so many times it makes me sick. And I'm like, no, my hook's not too big. I just didn't let him take it. I was quick to the draw. I snatched it out of his mouth. It's going to be okay. Chill. We'll get him next up. He's like, your hook's too big. <laughs> it's just an ongoing funny in our boat. Uh, number two, Gold Aberdeen is what I go to for men fishing. Now, um, the true turn, which is a gold Aberdeen with that funky bend in it. What does that funky bend do? Well, the thought process behind a true turn hook is because that shank, that eye, there's your eye, this is your shank. Because the eye is offset the bend, which your bend is obviously the bend of the hook. And the eye is offset your bend and your point. Right. So because it's offset, the thought process is when you set the hook, it allows the point of that hook to turn more towards where you're setting the hook in the direction you're setting the hook, which in turn is supposed to allow for a higher percentage hookup. OK, because it allows that to offset your line when you're pulling the force it allows that the point of that hook to offset that supposedly the thought process behind that is a higher percentage hookup ratio now again i'm not a scientist i don't have a camera to put underwater well i do but i don't use it um i have live scope it's close enough right does that actually work Mm, you know, I don't know. That's the thought process behind it. So I haven't used it enough to tell you it does or it doesn't, but that's the thought process behind it. So if you do use these and you believe in them, that's fine. Um, I just haven't used them enough to be 100% honest with you. And I don't want to be anything but 100% honest with you. So Curtis Hobbs, uh, Curtis is... 2.97 Big Fish, Clark Hill, Peach State Crabby Club, caught number two light wire hooks. Absolutely. Can you catch big fish on a light wire hook? No doubt about it. You just can't horse them. I'm telling you right now, if they boat flip that 297, they're crazy. Uh, I don't think you could boat flip a, a 297 with a light wire. You just have to be mindful, guys, because I'm telling you, a light wire hook will straighten out. That's what it's designed to do. That's the, that's the benefit to having a light wire hook is because you can straighten it out in a brush pile and not have to retie. So can you catch big fish on them? Absolutely you can. There's no way, shape, form, or fashion that you can't catch a big fish on a light wire. You just can't horse them. You can't put 20-pound braid on and you can't rip their lip off and jerk them from 20 feet to, to the boat in 3.6 milliseconds. It ain't happening. You got to be easy with them. You just got to remember, you got a light wire hook tied on. Um, but yeah. All right. Real quick, we're going to go back and see what you guys are saying, see what everybody's comments are. I have not been watching the comment section. I'm sorry. Um, been talking, but let's see. What do you guys got? Major Brown, I think I answered that. When do you use light wire hooks? I uh, seem to bending them out bad when cat catching fish. Um, again, they do bend. That's what they're designed to do. Um, but 
I use them in, in thick brush that I know I'm not going to be able to put when fish are under brush piles, especially middle of the day. Um, when I have to put that jig head in the brush pile and I know it's coming back up hung on a branch, if a fish doesn't hit it, it's getting hung. That's when I go to a light wire hook because I can straighten that hook out. I can bend it back with a pair of pliers for my fingers and bend it back with your fingers and you can go right back down to fishing. Okay. That's when I use a light wire hook. All right. Uh, let's see. Sorry, guys. I'm just trying to read some of y'all's comments. Just trying to make sure I don't miss anything. Uh, Tony says, I really like the true turns for fishing with minnows. Yeah, they're, good, they're great minnow hooks. That's what they were designed for. And, you know, they've got different colors. They've got different sizes. Um, you know, my fishing partner's on me all the time, like I said, about using a smaller hook. So I do have some. I've got some true turns that are smaller. I mean, look, here's a number two. Okay. Here's a, a number two true turn. And I've got some red number fours. Here's a little red number four. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a red number six. I'm sorry. That's a number two and a number six. Um, that's a true turn. A little red number six true turn. That's what my partner would use if he used one. And then I've got a little black number four. I've got some black number fours. There's some of those. Okay. So I've got different hooks too. And I, and I like, I like using uh, the true turns for minnows as well. And I do use them from time to time. I just hadn't used them enough to tell you if that turn actually does increase your catch percentage. I, you know, the cam action on that turn, I, I'm not up to snuff enough to tell you that truly does help or not. I, I think if a fish takes that minna, if a fish commits to taking that minna, it's not going to matter if you have that turn in your hook or not. But that's my opinion. Joseph Faxton says, I use a number two in most of my jigs. feel like it sticks the fish better. Yeah, number two is going to allow you a little bit longer shank. It's going to allow you a larger throat or larger gap. Um, it's going to, you know, allow that hook to have a little bit more bend outside of the plastic. So, you know, a number two is also my go-to size for crappie fishing, okay? Crappie Assassin, what's up? Texas Crappie Assassin says, heavy hook for sure. So I'm sure you can agree. If I was fishing in Texas, that number one extra heavy is going to be on your jig. I mean, that, that's what you're going to. That number one extra heavy is going to rock their world, right? Because you guys want to be able to rip them off that tree, rip them off that uh, whatever that structure is you're fishing, and you want to be able to put them in the boat. And I mean, put them through the air in the boat. You got, you know, so that extra heavy helps with that, right? Uh, Hope, what's going on, buddy? Glad you're with us. Uh, Mike, no, Mike said he caught a two and a half pounder. That's good. Uh, Lake of the Pines on a three inch slim stick with a number two sickle. Also lost my wired for crappie hat in the lake. Well, we got more. They're on the website, Mike. Go get you another one. I got plenty of them on the website. Uh, got them in gray and white and black and Black and gray and gray and white, I think, are the two colors that we've got. Anyway, they're on the website. You can check them out, www.wiredforcroppy.com, if you guys hadn't, don't know what the website is.
Barry Kelderman says happened a few times this year. I'm assuming, Barry, you're talking about the sickle breaking. Yeah, I just can't. I just mentally I just can't deal with that sickle breaking. It just it it irks me, man. It bothers me. Now, do I have a whole box? Look, I got a whole box full of sickles. I'm telling you. I mean, let's see if I can turn this up without dumping them out. But anyway, no, I can't. Uh, yeah. I got a whole box full of sickles. Well, just this way. I got a whole box full all the way across sickle hooks, right? So, do I fish with them? Yeah, I fish with them. But is it always in the back of my mind that, hey, I've straightened that hook out twice now? Yeah. With a round bend, do I worry about it? No. So, that's, that's just me. All right. Let's see. <laughs> Slab Buster says, you're not talking me out of my sickle hook, Matt. Best they is super sharp, too. <laughs> I'm not listening. I'm not trying to talk anybody <laughs> out of anything. <laughs> I'm just cool. I'm just being up front with you guys and my experience with the different types of hooks. OK, I'm not trying to talk anybody out of a sickle hook. I use them. All right. Um, and now I've had people tell me that they lose more fish with a sickle hook. Uh, now I will say this, some sickle hooks, you gotta be careful because some sickle hooks do not have a very large barb. All right. So if you look at this hook here, the barb, see if I can get that focused enough. Can you see that barb on that hook? It is very small, okay? Very small barb on that hook. Now, if you look at, uh, that's a light wire. That was a number two. I got to find a number two. All right, here's a number two round bend, okay? Let me get it. There you go. See that barb on that number two round bend? It is about twice the size of a barb on that round bend than that sickle. I will say I've noticed that with some sickles as well is the barb just isn't quite as large. Um, and some may like that. Some may say, yeah, I like a smaller barb. It's easier to get the hook out. Some may say, you know, you could potentially lose more fish because the barb doesn't pin them, keep them pinned. Eh. Yeah. Apples and apples, I guess, but uh, I do like a little larger barb. I like to have a barb and I've seen some sickles. I've got some in my box that have no barb. I mean, it's almost non-existent on the barb. So, uh, you know, just be cautious of that, I guess. Major Brown, do you bend out your round bends for better hookups? Very good question, Major. Very good question. So let me see if I can find one because I know there's one in my box somewhere. Hang on just a second. Let me find one. I think there's one right here. No, that ain't one. This is. All right. All right. If you look, I, mean, I need something to hold this with. Here we go. Let me use these. All right. If you look, that hook, if you look at the point of that hook, the point of that hook is actually pointing at the eye. Can you guys see that? Can you see the point of that hook is almost turned down facing the eye or pointing directly at the eye absolutely open that joker up absolutely reason why let me thread this on let me thread this on my jig real quick reason why i say that let me hold it with my 
pliers again. That was actually kind of nice. All right. Do you see, let me get something to point with. Do you see that? Okay. The point of the hook between the point of the hook right here and the body, you see what that bend down actually does. It closes this gap in between the point and the body of that jig. So see how wide it is back here in the throat between the body and the, and the top of the hook. Look right there at the point. It's closed. You guys see that? So what I will do is I will take this and open that up. I'll take a pair of pliers and I'll open that up just enough. I don't want it pointing too high. Okay. But I want it opened up just enough to where now. Okay. This space from the body to the throat right here at the base of the, at the base of the hook. Okay. Is level. See how much that opened that up to allow for that fish to slide in here and get pinned. So yes, major, that is a very good question. You need to inspect your hooks, guys. When you put a jig on your hook, you need to pay attention to that. You need to pay attention to how that jig is sitting on that hook and ensure that you are going to be able to button that fish up when he strikes. Okay, that makes sense. See how much better that looks now? Very, very good question. Thank you, Major. I appreciate that question. Very, very good. Very, very important. Uh, making waves asks, do I use two baits? No, I do not. I do not use two baits. Uh, I use bonehead jigs. I'm a bonehead tackle guy because I'm quite the bonehead myself, but uh, I prefer the bonehead stump bug. Everybody knows that is a go-to for me. Um, they've got them in multiple colors. I love the bait. I can make it look different. I can make it look multiple ways just by tearing legs off of it, and that's what I prefer. Um, oh, yeah, by the way, bonehead tackle, guys, crappie 2020 is the discount code for bonehead tackle crappie 2020 obviously the 2020 is the year you get 15 percent off with that discount code it is december the 9th there's only about 21 22 is that right 22 days left in the year take advantage of that 15 percent off they do that for the channel thank you to bonehead for doing that but that gets you guys 15 percent off so that's a way for you guys to save money on your fishing gear. All right, crappie 2020, take advantage of that before the year's over, okay? Marshall Barton, very good question, Marshall. Do you ever use jig hooks with minnows only? So I'm, what I'm assuming you're asking is, do I ever take a jig head like this right here and put a minnow on it. Yes, I do, as a matter of fact. Um, I actually did that uh, in a tournament earlier this year on Douglas. Uh, we were fishing a treetop, and there were fish underneath the treetop. And I don't want to get off subject real far, Marshall, but what happens is when you put a minnow on this hook, with a split shot above him, if you put that split shot six inches up, he's got a six inch radius that he can travel, that minna can travel. All he's got to carry is that hook, which is not that hard when it's in the water. Okay. So that minna can move around in a six inch circle. Actually, a 12 inch circle, because six inches this way, six inches that way. So 12 inch circle, basically. Um, that fish can, or that minna can move around. What happens is when you put that down in a brush pile, you get hung. Right. So when you take a jig head such as this, an eighth ounce jig head, and actually this is the exact jig head that I was using on Douglas. It was a light wire jig head, pink. That is pink. It just looks funny because 
for some reason it's making it look glittery. It's not glittery. It's just pink. It is to me. I don't know if it is to you. But this is the exact jig head that I used. And what I did is I tied braid directly to that jig head. And I went straight down in that treetop to the bottom of that treetop underneath it where it was creating kind of a, that treetop had fallen over and it was creating a kind of an umbrella effect and the fish were in, in underneath that tree. I could drop that down with a minnow on it. With that eighth ounce head, that minnow cannot move. He's He can't carry, well, I shouldn't say he can't carry it, but it's very difficult for that minnow to carry that eighth ounce jig head around. So where you drop him down, he's pretty much sitting there. Um, and it, it, it keeps you from getting hung a lot of times. You could even go to a quarter ounce head and it would just more so keep that keep that minnow from moving around in that treetop, okay? Teddy says, what pound test braid do you fish using brush? I use the 12 pound, okay, that's 12 pound bonehead B power braided line. That's what I use. Um, that is high vis orange. I also have it in high vis yellow. I do not have a preference in yellow or orange. I do like high vis line so I can see it on the lake or in the air or whatever. Um, I like to be able to see my line so I can see that bite. But uh, orange, yellow, it doesn't really make much difference, Teddy, to me, which, which high vis I use. Uh, Jamie Nelson, any tips for fishing heavy cover and after hooking fish get hung? That's just the, uh, Jamie, I wish I did, buddy. I mean, that's just the nature of the beast, okay? Um, if you can, if you can focus very, very close and as soon as you feel that fish pick up that, that minnow, that jig, that whatever you're using, and you can button him up as quickly as possible, that will keep him from moving off with your jig. A lot of times they get tangled up because they're on the, they're on the bait before we set the hook. They could be on there for two seconds and that fish can go two feet in two seconds. So it allows them to wrap around something. The quicker you get that fish pinned, the better off you're going to be. Okay. Now don't horse him. Don't jerk a knot in him because you could, you're going to rip the hook out of his mouth, but just button him up, get him moving in the direction you want him moving in. That'll help you. Daryl says a true turn will catch your finger faster than a straight hook. <laughs> I think Daryl knows that from experience. I think there's some experience in those words. Barry said, yeah, the sickle breaking. Yeah, I know I'm way behind, guys. I'm trying to catch up. Steven, running late tonight, but I'm here in time to give a thumbs up. Thank you, Steven. I appreciate it, buddy. Kid Crappie, you are using the wrong sickles if that is happening. The black sickles are better than the bronze. I disagree. I disagree 100%. There is no difference in the black and the bronze. As a matter of fact, uh, do I have any black ones in here with me? I don't think I do. I don't think I have any black ones in here, Kid Crappie, but um, absolutely not. I, I, I would disagree with that 100%. Um, the black and the bronze will break the exact same. I've used them all. I've used the black, the blonde, the bronze, the red. I've used every one of them, and they will break the same. The problem is not the hook, okay? The problem is not the hook. There's not an issue with the hooks, guys. That's not what I'm saying. The issue with a sickle hook, okay, kid crappie? The issue with a sickle, okay, there's bronze, there's a red, I've got blacks, they don't have them in here, they're in my other box, but the issue is not the hook itself. The issue in lies this point right here. It is bent past 90 degrees. What that does to that hook is it puts a weak spot in that hook. Doesn't matter if it's black, brown, or bronze. It's still a weak spot, okay? Uh, as a matter of fact, now that I'm looking with my computer screen in the background, 
Guys, what you need to do, get your sickle hook and hold it up to your computer, and you can actually see a crease in those hooks in every one of them. Hmm. You can almost see it right there. Almost see it right there. Almost see a crease in that hook because it's bent past 90. All right. It creases it. Doesn't matter if it's black, brown, blue, purple, green, orange, red. Does not make a difference. You can see it right there. Ooh, I just had it. Hang on. You can, oh, oh man, you can almost see it right there. Right in here. Okay. Man, I wish y'all guys could see that. I need high def. Can almost see that crease right there in that red hook. So that is that is the problem. Doesn't have to do with the hook. It's not a hook fault. If that hook was bent around, it wouldn't do that. Man, I wish I had them. I wish I had the black one. I'd break one for you if I had one. I'm about to go to the boat. Y'all about to send me to the boat. Now I'm going to let it go. We'll let that go. All right. Uh, Slapbuster, what Matt? What's your opinion on Rockport Rattler jig heads? I do have some Rockport Rattlers. I have used the Rockport Rattler. Um, I think they're better designed for spider rigging, and you know, they have to have movement to to rattle. I mean, if you've got if you're reeling, if you're casting, and you're reeling, you don't have. I mean, unless you're popping your jig, you really don't have the movement to create the rattle. Um, if you're dead sticking, unless you're popping it, you really don't have a whole lot of rattle. Um, I, I think my personal opinion, they were better suited for spider rigging because when you're spider rigging and you've got the waves bouncing the boat, you know, you're getting that tick, to tick, to tick, to tick, um, of the Rockport Rattler. I did use them when I used to spider rig a little bit, uh, and I did catch fish on them. So, you know. Uh, for a casting jig or a brush pile jig, I would not personally, that would not be my first choice because they're a little more expensive and I'm cheap. Um, so I don't want to get them in a brush pile and lose them all the time. But uh, yeah, I, I personally would not use them in brush, but they, they did work. I did catch fish on them when I spider rigged. Alan, what's up? Alan says, better late than never. You are right, my friend. Welcome. Uh, my wife is making her nightly rounds. She's sitting at my office door, smiling at me, looking all pretty. She makes her nightly round about halfway through every night. Every Wednesday. Yeah. All right. You guys want to see my wife dancing? Yeah, she ran away. I was going to move a computer over and let you guys see my wife dance. She danced at my door there. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hey, my wife can dance. She can get down. Ain't no doubt. Do it again. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, on a number two Aberdeen hook with a split shot, where do you hook the minnow? Barry says, so number, teen, number two Aberdeen split shot, where do you hook the minnow? I used to hook them through the lips, Barry, but I since started hooking them in the tail and had better luck hooking them in the tail. Can't exactly answer as to why that is, but I've been hooking them in the tail now for the last few months that I've used when I've used them in. 
um, and it has been very productive. So I'd try both ways. And I guess I think I've thought to myself that by hooking them in the tail and that minna, you know, acting almost like he's in distress because he's carrying now he's carrying a hook on his tail. Um, a fish always wants to eat a minna from the head, right? They always want to eat a minna from the head. That way, when they swallow a minna, the fins of the minna don't poke them. Uh, so they're always feeding from the head and I always, I guess I feel like when you hook them in the tail, it allows that fish to get that head a little easier. Um, I don't know. That's just kind of my thought, but I've been hooking them in the tail lately. Lab Buster says, I don't like those twist turn hooks. I think they actually miss more fish. They may. They may. Hard to tell unless you're down there with them. I mean, it's pretty hard to tell. Uh, again, I, I'm not sure. Kid Grappy says, maybe it's just who you're getting them from. Uh, okay. Maybe it is. Uh, but I have gotten sickle hooks from probably... 12 different people and they all do the same thing from the dozen people I've got them from and I don't know maybe you maybe you're right kid crappie I don't know I challenge you though uh see how many times you've been them before they go bottom line is they'll go depending it doesn't matter how many times you have to bend it it'll go it'll break and it'll break in the same spot every time. A round bend won't do that. So that's all I'm saying. At some point, they're going to break in that one location. Every time. Every single time. Let me get a red one. We did a bronze one earlier. Let me get a red one out and try it. And it may take 10. It may take four. It may take one. It may take who knows, but we'll try it. Here's a red one. So let's get hooked on here. <laughs> so when it goes, it's going in the same spot. It's actually kind of hard. Now, the thing you have to remember is you've got to create a hook back like you're going to put a jig on it, right? Because you don't want to you don't want to just bend it to where it's not a hook. I mean, I'm bending it back to a hook. So, oh, same exact spot. Same exact spot. Every time it breaks, it's going to break in the exact same spot where it bends past 90 degrees every time. I could do it with every hook in my box if it'd make you feel better, but it's going to break at the same spot every single time. All of them, not just one, all of them. Uh, Rodman, op uh, opinions on painted versus unpainted jig heads. Uh, my opinion is, Rodman, that uh, unpainted is a color too. Okay. I have no idea where the point of that hook went, and it's probably going to end up in my feet. Oh, well. I'll find it later. Maybe. I hope. Or my, hey, there it is. Or my kids will find it. All right. Uh, unpainted is a color too, Rodman. Um, silver is a color. 
If you guys look here, I have several. See that? I've got unpainted here. Well, let's see. I've got unpainted here. I've got unpainted here. I've got unpainted here. I've got unpainted there. Uh, that's just one of my boxes. In the other box, I have more unpainted. Now I got stuff on it. I'm not gonna hold it up. You get the idea. Unpainted jig heads are a color. Silver is a color, and most bait fish are silver, right? So, if I have unpainted jig heads, I don't paint them anymore. If I get a good deal on chartreuse jig heads, I'll buy chartreuse. If I get a good deal on, you know, red, pink, white, you know, whatever. I typically buy them now. I, I do dip some jig heads if I if I just want a color and I don't have it. I will dip dig jig heads. Uh, I, I buy most all mine unpainted and I dip them now. Uh, Crappie Magnet actually has a very good chartreuse. I really like their chartreuse, so I buy those from them. Um, but yeah, I uh, I believe silver is a color. So if that answers your question. Y'all can keep it up. Y'all, hey, y'all let me have it. I'm good with it. But I'm telling you, yours are going to break. I'll tell you what, Slab Buster and Kid Crappie, if you two are still on here, send me some of your sickles. Let me give you my, let me give you my, let me give you www.info, or no, I'm sorry, info at wiredforcrappie.com. That is my email address, Slab Buster and Kid Crappie. Info at wiredforcrappie.com. You guys send me some of your sickles that don't do that. And next week, you come back and we'll put them to the test. How's that? We'll put them to the test and we'll see where they break at. Guarantee you they'll be in the same spot. Guaranteed. If not... I will send you a hat, a beanie, a shirt, and a hoodie to you guys if they do not break in the exact same spot. Deal? I'm, I'm going all in, boys. I'm going all in. Deal or no deal? Let me know. Leave me a comment. Deal or no deal? Let's see. Larry Merrick, uh, on Watts Bar two weeks ago, day after cold front, fish hugging the bottom, couldn't even see them on live scope till the bait was down. Went out again yesterday and fish still on the bottom. Uh, what's up with that? Uh, easy cold fronts put fish on the bottom uh, low pressure they suck down to the bottom of the lake Larry the uh, in the winter when these cold fronts come through uh, there's oxygen throughout the entire lake and the low pressure puts them on the bottom they go to deeper water because deeper water is not affected by cold fronts as much Surface temperatures cool very quickly. Uh, there's fluctuation in the in the temperatures. They drop down on the bottom of the lake because it's not affected as much by by uh, the cold. Also, what I know about Watts bars, they've been spilling, and current will put them on the bottom too. There's been a lot of current on Watts bar. Uh, I think that's slowed down some, but there has been a lot of current. Current will put fish on the bottom of the lake. They, they go to the bottom of the lake to get out of the current. They can sit right on the bottom, put mud on their fins, and, and it keeps them out of the current. Uh, so that's probably what you were experiencing. 
Alan Wetzel, did you make a decision on the ramp Saturday? Yes, I did. We are still going out of Concord. I will see everybody at Concord Saturday morning for registration from 6.30 to 7 o'clock. All right, I'm going to go on down and see if Kid Crappie or Slab Buster have... Oh, Slap Buster done turned his little tune there a little bit right there, right there, like that. No, I agree. They will break faster than a round hook. That's just the law of physics because of the bend they have. But I've never lost a fish with one because of breakage. See, y'all was giving me all that stuff, Slap Buster. And now I done, I done put it, I done laid it down, son. I done laid it down. And now I ain't getting no comments. Where's Kid Crappie at? He ain't saying nothing either. I ain't seen no, he ain't got no post on here. Where'd he go? Where you at, kid? Come on now. Wait a minute, maybe he did. No, I still don't see him. Man, where's he at? I don't see him on that. Anyway, again, guys, look, it's just personal opinion. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I have sickle hooks. I have round hooks. I have light wires. I have uh, extra heavies, heavies. I've got gold. I've got red. We hadn't talked about color. We ain't talking about color yet. What am I doing? I'm lost my mind. Let me get a drink. It is just Coca-Cola in there. I promise. No additives. Just Coca-Cola. All right. So let's talk about color. Okay. You've got, because Kid Crappie and I and, and Slab Buster have been going all out about it. So, you know, <laughs> the bronze one, the red one, the black one. So you got bronze, red, black, gold. Uh, you've even got some greens. Uh, what other color am I missing? Am I missing any? I don't think so. Anyway, uh, so I've got gold. As you guys saw, I have red. Okay. I have bronze, gold, red. I said all those. And I've even got black. <clears throat> so there they are. There's mo that's pretty much the colors that I keep in my box. Bronze, red, gold, and black. Okay. Um, when do I use what color? Well, it's simple. If I'm using a translucent bait, similar to, uh, let me find something. If I'm using something translucent like this slim stick right here where I can see through, you know, I may put a red hook in it. All right. This one's a little bit cloudier than some, but you get the drift. All right, so uh, you can't really see with the light hitting it that way, but there's a red hook in there. So if I'm using, you know, if I'm fishing clear water and I, it's a clear, uh, clear lake, I, I may throw a red hook in there and give it a little bit of a, a line, give it a lot, kind of a bloodline or a lateral line or whatever you want to call it. Uh, if I'm using something like a black and chartreuse, I don't care what color hook it is. Uh, you know, if, if I'm putting a hook through that black stump bug it really don't matter what color it is because the only thing you're gonna see is the tip of it so you know am i a huge believer in color nee, nee, nah. not really but i will say this a little bit of gold on a good sunny day okay well let me just use so i don't keep sticking all my baits a little bit of gold sticking out of a bait ain't a bad thing a little bit of flash, just a little added something on a good sunny day. So, you know, a little bit of gold sticking out of the top of there. You guys can see how that kind of flashes there, just in here. All right. Ain't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, a, a, it, but I don't think, in my opinion, that a hook is going to dictate a bite or not a bite. Um now, like I said, I got red, I got gold, I got bronze, I got black, I got them all. Uh, I'm kind of a bargain shopper when it comes to hooks. 
Uh, I try to, I mean, if, if I find red ones that are a little bit cheaper than a, than a gold one, then sure. I'll pick up the red ones. Don't bother me. None. Um, if I find bronze ones that are, that are on sale, I'll buy the bronze ones. So that's kind of how I dictate color. As far as my hooks are concerned. Um, I just, uh, again, I'm, I'm not a huge believer in a red hook that makes a difference or vice versa. Marshall Barton says, thanks for the school tonight. It has been a real learning experience. You're welcome, sir. Thank you for joining. Thank you for being a part. I appreciate everybody for joining and talking with us, going over everything. Impact. Where are crappie in the winter in rivers? Uh, what river are you fishing? Are you fishing... Res are you fishing East Tennessee rivers? Because our rivers are the flow of some of our rivers are dictated by the dams. Or are you fishing someplace like the Mississippi where there's always flow? It never shuts off. Ours fluctuates. So that makes a big difference. Um, so if you want to give me a little idea, I mean, are you fishing like a, a river that's in between two reservoirs that are that the flow is dictated by dams opening and closing, or are you fishing just an open river that's flow all the time? Okay. Slab Buster says the red sickles I had wouldn't bend, they would just snap if you tried to bend. Uh, if they, yeah, well, those were the China ones, not mine. Mine, I'd have been mine. <laughs> you had the China ones. Uh, Hope says just go to the boat and get a black one and let's see. Well, I'd have to drive over to the shop to get the boat, so I'm not going to do that right now. But, like I said, I'm open. If they want to send me, I'll even reimburse them for the shipping. I'll even pay the shipping back. If they want to send me one, we'll see if it breaks next week. <laughs> I, I don't want them to say mine were from China. I want them to send me theirs. I want to try it. I want to test that joker out. And if it don't break, I want to know where they got them at. For sure. But we've done got off on knocking. Uh, we uh, we done got off on knocking the sickle hook. Now I don't want to do that because it is a good hook. It serves its purpose and it does a good job for what it's built for. Uh, it just has it's it's just has its flaw, and that's okay. <laughs> Barry, favorite stump bug color? Man, I keep getting asked this question. <laughs> I, I don't know if anybody's put it in the comments yet, but um, I laugh, Barry, because when I tell you this, you're, you're going to laugh with me, okay? Favorite stump bug color? Without a doubt. Everybody sees me reaching up here and they think, my God, not again. Um, my favorite stump bug color is that grasshopper it is pumpkin and chartreuse okay pumpkin top chartreuse bottom that is my favorite color now there is a stipulation to this that peg right there has got about 15 or 18 packs on it and they are the last 15 or 18 packs in america don't believe me try to find them i promise they're the last ones um stump bugs there are a few slim sticks still floating around out there in, in grasshopper, but stump bugs, those are the last packs in America. <laughs> so um, my favorite color after that stump bug, after that grasshopper would have to be black and chartreuse. Um, the black and chartreuse stump bug is a friggin go to on any lake that I've ever been to. I have not ever been to a lake that I could not catch them on that black and chartreuse stump bug. Um, black and chartreuse is a go to color on any lake. Um, 
it just works. So um, been a good go-to for years for a lot of guys and a lot of guys fish black and chartreuse. So that would be my go-to that I could buy off the shelf right now. Uh, right now. I repeat right now. Okay. I'm not going to leave it there. Um, let's see. Joseph, here's a good question. You guys fish spoons for crappie. How you guys work them? Actually, I did experiment with spoons, Joseph. Um, last year, as a matter of fact, uh, I did some summer fishing with spoons, and they do catch crappie. It's pretty neat, as a matter of fact. And so I fished them a couple different ways. I would cast them across a brush pile and rip them, two cranks, just rip it, and then just let it flutter, and then rip it, and then let it flutter, rip it, and let it flutter. And they would always, 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 always hit it on the flutter. All right. So those two cranks is just enough to pick it back up and then let it fall and then pick it back up and then let it flutter. Um, I can't remember the weight of the jig or the spoon I was using. Uh, and I also caught them just straight up and down. Uh, you get right over top of them and just yank that, yank that joker and just let it flutter back down. They'd always hit it on the flutter. Okay. So to answer your question, yeah, I've used spoons. Is it my, is it go-to? No, it's, it's not a go-to for me. Uh, you really have to, you really have to get them when they're in the right mood um, to get the spoon bite. In Tennessee, you do anyway. Oh, Heidi knows me too well, don't you, Heidi? Barry, Matt likes pumpkin colored stump bugs, but he owns all they had left. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, that's true, Heidi. Right now, that's true. Uh, as we're sitting today, that's true. And I can't say anything other than that. All right. All right. Next. Barry says, ordering some stuff now. Thank you, Barry. I appreciate you, buddy. We'll get that shipped out to you ASAP. Jamie Nelson. <laughs> Pumpkin and chartreuse. <laughs> That's pretty good. Look, for the guys that have had to sit here and listen to me talk about pumpkin and chartreuse over and over the pumpkin and chartreuse stump bugs over and over the ones that have had to listen to me point at that peg for the last four months okay let me tell you something we got something up our sleeve all right i can't go into detail I won't go into detail, but I won't have to point at that peg forever. Okay. So, um, anyway, don't smack yourself in the face, Jamie. I've already extended my limit of saying too much, but don't smack yourself in the face. I'll do it for you. All right. Uh, Alan, those colors even on a rainy Saturday. <laughs> so, uh, again, East Tennessee Crappie Club has their tournament on Loudon this Saturday. It is projected to be a little rainy, but it's only like 40%. Alan, are you a glass half empty? Come on, 40%. It ain't going to rain. I say that sure as a world is a monsoon now. Um, but yeah, uh, th those colors, sure, sure. Use those colors. No worries. 
go ahead. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Um, we'll see. We'll see what they're we'll see what they're hitting on come Saturday. How's that? I promise you, if we finish somewhere in the top and get a check, I will tell you what color I caught them. On. But as of right now, I don't really know. Slab busters to stack vertically. Yeah, boy. Oh, keep teasing us, Matt. Yay. Look, there's a lot of things I tease about, Heidi, but that ain't going to be one of them. Now, I won't tease you on that one. Uh, I will. Uh, look, I got I to stop. I got to stop. All right. Uh, thank you for the tips on working spoons. Great info for a newbie crappie fisherman. You're welcome, Joseph. Um, I hope it helps you. I hope you manage to catch a few on a spoon. Alan Wetzel said chicken. <laughs> That's the color to use, Alan. Chicken. Electric chicken. There you go. Very right. See? You're learning. You're catching on. Electric chicken. I tell you what. You use an electric chicken and you use that that crappie, that, that, that Charlie Brewer slider, an electric chicken. You ought to use those. I paid $3.29 for them. <laughs> there you go, buddy. You asked. I told. Right there. Right there like it. All right, we got to the bottom of the feed, guys. We've been on an hour and 45 minutes. I'm going to talk for just a couple more minutes. I know my feed is behind a lot of times, so I don't like cutting it off without telling you guys that I'm going to talk for a couple more minutes and giving you the opportunity to ask any last questions that you may have, any questions, any comments. I'd be more than happy to, uh, to answer those for you uh, before I go. So, uh, again, I hope I covered pretty much everything on hooks. Uh, I'm trying to think if I left anything out. I don't believe that I did. Um, again, jig heads, guys. We'll talk jig heads another night. I mean, there's all kinds of different jig heads. There's aspirin heads, round heads, uh, minna heads. There's um, pony heads. There's bladed heads. There's, you know, just collared, not collared, uh, uh, not needled, um, uh, pinned, not pinned. Uh, there's just all kinds of different heads, different variations of heads, um, barbed, unbarbed, double barbed. I mean, it's just ongoing on and on and on. So we'll have that conversation too one night and we'll talk jig heads and we'll get down and dirty with it and get in the nitty gritties and, you know, I'll get yelled at some more and, We'll go back and forth and maybe somebody will tell me that one head sinks faster than the other or something. And I'll be able to ask them to send me theirs or know, we'll see. But I had fun tonight. I had a good time. Um, I appreciate all your comments. I appreciate everyone for joining us. Um, check out the video coming this week. It is going to be a good one. There are going to be more fish off Hartwell and the fish are getting bigger. So had a lot of fun out there. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the videos. Uh, I love, love, love getting on here and talking with you guys and answering questions for you. Uh, it's just so much. Uh, it adds so much more for me just than putting videos out and editing them and putting them out there for you guys to watch. Um, it, it just it adds so much more for me. And I appreciate you guys for being here. Uh, let me see if I got any more questions real quick. Uh, Daryl Coral says, off subject, what type of docks do you think hold the bigger crappie, rigid or floating docks? Uh, it's not so much the dock, Daryl, as it is what's around the dock. Is there structure around the dock? Is there a creek channel nearby? Is there a drop under the dock? Is there a, it, it's more about the, the, the makeup of where that dock is than it is the actual dock. Okay. Structure, structure. Uh, it has more to do with the location than, in my opinion, the location and what's around has more to do than, than I mean, I, I can't tell you that. I, look, I've caught a lot of big fish off a floating dock. I've caught a lot of big fish off of a, what you're calling a rigid dock, um, a pole dock. 
uh, it, it just that is a question that you know really can't be answered truthfully. So it, it just has to do with more about about what's around the dock. Okay. Ronnie Harris, you might have said, but what size hook do you use to tie jigs? Uh, I did not say. I will use either a number four or a number two, Ronnie. Depends on what I'm tying. And it depends on if I want to tie a large jig or a small jig. If I want to tie something smaller, I'll use a four. If I want to tie a little bit larger, a little longer jig, I'll use a, a number two. And I assume you mean tying hair jigs. So uh, that's what I use. Andy Perry said, good luck this weekend. We need to see a first place finish, not second. Lots of laughs. Well, thank you. Hey, hey every time we show up, we're gunning for first. Every time. When we're not going out there doing anything else, but it doesn't always pan out that way. No one out there. It doesn't matter if they're the best crappie fishermen in the world. It, 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 you're not going to finish first every tournament. It's not possible. Always going to be those days where you get beat. So uh, we go out there, we do our best, and we finish where we can. And our best is just good enough. Right? So as long as we did our best, we've done all we can. But thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for the good luck. Heidi says, uh, thank you, Matt, for another very informative live. I have writer's cramp, lots of laughs, learned a lot as usual. Have a blessed week. Hope you do well this weekend. Thank you. You have a blessed week as well, Heidi. Thank you for joining. Heidi's always on. I appreciate you, Heidi. Um, I see you every week, and I thank you for that. Chad Hillard, I didn't realize there was so much to hook until tonight. I got schooled. Thanks. Well, Chad, there is a lot to hook. It's the business end of what we do, like I said earlier. And um, the the business end of what we do is my dog just came in here with a Dorito. So if you guys hear crunching, that is my dog eating a Dorito. Um, the business end of what we do is the hook. And it is probably one of the most important parts of what it is we go out there to do. And that's catch fish. Can't catch fish without the hook. So there's a lot to them. There's a lot of different types of hooks and they're all stay all serve a different purpose and a different application. So hope that helps. Hope I've helped you guys maybe see where some of those hooks benefit you and hurt you. Some of those hooks are going to hurt you in certain situations. Some are going to benefit you in other situations. So there's toss ups and trade offs to every hook. Hey, Rusty, you got enough to drink, buddy? Thank you. Come on. Come on. You want up here? Come on. You want to say hi? Come on. Get up here. Nope. All right. Barry says, learned a lot tonight. That is good, my friend. I'm glad. Larry McBride, thanks, Matt. Do you like shallow water for crappie or deep water? MJW. Uh, depends on the year or depends on the season. Uh, I typically stay out in a little deeper water. Uh, I am an offshore structure fisherman. I do like offshore structure and I do tend to gravitate towards that little bit deeper water. So I would say, you know, probably for me a little bit deeper. Wes said, thanks for the videos and info. Maybe one day I'll actually make the start of the live feed. I hope you do, Wes. I hope you do. Thank you for joining anyway. Uh, and thank you for uh, for the kind words. I appreciate it very much. Daryl Quarles says, good night, all. Good night, Daryl. Jamie says, good luck this weekend. Uh, Ronnie says, good luck. And may God bless you and yours. Uh, and that is going to sign us off. Thank you, Ronnie. I appreciate it. Guys, as always, God bless. I appreciate y'all for watching. Don't forget to watch the videos and do me a favor this week, guys, please share a video, share some of the content, 
Put it on your Facebook page. Let your friends watch it. Tell somebody about the channel. That's all I ask. If you could do that for me this week, I'd appreciate it. I hope y'all have a great night, great week. God bless, and we will see you guys later.